Hello? Can y'all hear me? All right. Welcome. Welcome. I'm glad to see all of y'all here. Welcome to our first night of our evangelistic youth series. Before I begin, let's all take a word of prayer. Dear Lord, let, dear God, let, let me be your vessel and let me preach your word. Let every, let every body and heart be touched tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. The topic tonight is signs you cannot ignore and facing the, the future unafraid. Now, the story I'm about to tell you is very interesting to me. The story takes place in 1998 from New York. It is about a, it's about a radio drama that the actors make so realistic that the listeners think it's actually taking place. It's about how an alien or a Martian, in, a Martian invasion is taking place and they're eating everybody up and they panic in such a way of fear and, and panic. They, some people commit suicide they, they pack up all their stuff and they leave, and and they even the Navy even had to cancel leaving their fleet from leaving the New York Harbor to try to stop it. But by the time it was done, they they realized that it was too late and that it wasn't real. The question of how the world will end has fascinated and frightened many throughout the centuries. Today, actually, there is a there is a there is a cert, there is a concern about global warming and how it will destroy life on earth. Some fear that a global that we will destroy ourselves with a nuclear war or World War 3 as most, most of us might say. Others think that we will run out of food and resources to sustain the world population growth. Others think well, we will die like the dinosaurs and get hit by a meteor. A lot of, for a lot of us, that's a lot to take in. And we struggle through our daily lives, going through grief and sickness and death. And for a lot of us, and most of us, that's not easy. Life isn't easy. Sometimes we actually we actually find ourselves thinking that the world would end or want the world to end. We, and we want a better world. Well, my friends, I have good news. The world is going to end, and pretty soon. And the world is going, and there's going to be a better world. But the question is, how will our old world, planet Earth, end, right? There are a lot of people giving predictions and giving all these false accusations of how the world will end, but we want to know how we can trust these predictions. I know somebody who's, who, who's made prophecies and predictions that have come true every single time. Tonight, we will be talking about how God, how, how, how God will predict the world will end. And I and I am and I assure you that you will agree with me when about these predictions that were given nearly 2000 years ago that are amazingly accurate. So, one day in Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples were were meeting at a temple. Gazing at the gazing at 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 the incredible temple, God made a startling statement to his disciples. Now, in Matthew 24, verse 2, as y'all will read with me, it says, do, do, not, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be, shall be left here upon another that shall, that shall not be thrown down. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. And as they went to the Mount of E, the Mount of Olives, they came to Jesus to ask him a question. In Matthew twenty, twenty-three verse, in Matthew twenty-four verse three, 
they came, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And, and, where will your, will, and what will the signs of your coming and the end of the age will be? As you can see, the disciples were sure that the disciples were sure that Jerusalem and its temple would are destined to last forever. But as we study the passage more carefully, Jesus speaks of two different events. One was the second coming. The other, however, was the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and the temple. Bear with me. In Matthew 24, verse 15 through 16, it says, it says that, it says, therefore, when you shall see the abomination of, desol- of, de- of desolation spoken by, the, by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who who were in Judah flee to the mountains. Even Daniel the prophet had had predicted that that Jerusalem would would be destroyed. (sighs) Hold on. And okay. In Matthew 24, verse 17 through 18, it says that let let it says let then let those who are hmm? that's the let Okay. Judah flee to the mountains. Okay. Daniel the okay. Even Daniel the prophet had predicted that Jerusalem would be destroyed. In in Matthew twenty four verse fifteen through seventeen, it says that let the, let him who is on thy housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. And let, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. In other words, he told us to flee for our lives. Amen. Even in Luke's account, in Luke 21, 21, 20, Appreciate it. It says, but, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by the armies, then know that, then know its this desolation is near. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things are, that are written may be fulfilled. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led by, away captive to, into all nations. And the gen- and Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the time until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. In the year six in the six, in the year six, 66 A.D., approximately 33 years after Jesus gave his prediction, the Roman armies, under the control of Cetus, the governor of the the Roman governor came down to put a rebellion a rebellion that bro- that had broken out in Jerusalem as they led the siege against the city however however the city withstood the ravages of the of the Roman army and finally 
the Roman armies withdrew, despairing of actually being able to take the city. That is from Church History, Book 3, Chapter 5. You see, those who followed the instructions of Jesus fled the city and were saved from the slaughter of the inhabitants of, of the Roman army that, were, that was destroyed four years later. Approximately 1,100,000 1, were killed in this terrible siege in, eight, in 70 A.D. This is a striking, this is a striking lesson of importance of studying and believing the prophets of the prophecies. So, so it is. So it will be the end of days that the the watchful the watchful believers will will be saved and delivered, while the careless and unbelieved will perish. But what about the magnificent temple? Titus, the Roman gov- the Roman general in charge of taking the city, had given orders to to save the temple, but one of his one of his soldiers threw a lit torch. In a, in a door in the temple. And the temple became a flaming inferno. But what about, what, what about the second part of Jesus' prophecy regarding the end, the end of the world? Jesus gave us a series of clear signs so that we... So that we so that we can know when that time is near. Let us look at the let us look at let us look at the first sign, political strife and conflict. In Matthew 24 verse 7, it says for a nation will for a nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence and earthquakes in various places. The 21st century was the bloodiest century in, in mankind's history. Why? In World War, in World War I, 20, 20 million people sacrificed their lives on the altar of battle. And in, tw- in World War II, they witnessed a destruction of 50 million people. Everybody talks about peace, but it eludes us. The Bible teaches that man's best effort at peace always falls short. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, it says, For, for, when, peace, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. The global war against terror has again rewritten the rules. All the, all the dis, disarmative treaties against nations will mean nothing if powerful weapons are in the hands of terrorists. But, but, but bloodshed is not the only sign of the last days. Jesus gives us another sign, famines. And in Matthew 24, 7, Jesus literally says, there will be famines. And there are famines in many parts of the world. It is estimated that, 50, that 57 million people star- will starve in this one year. That, that is, that is 156,000 who, di- who will die each day of starvation, from starvation. From the, pe- from the billions of people on planet Earth, 60%, 60 are malnourished. 20% will end up starving or die of starvation. Jesus, Jesus said that, there will, that, that famines will be one of the signs of the end. Informed sources tells us that food, that, that, that food output production World and then worldwide famine, starvation, epidemics, and food war are unavoidable. But my question is, how are we going to feed the billions on our earth 
when two thirds of it is star but two thirds of our population are starving. And we, and Jesus describes describes the growing anxiety that causes these disease, disasters in Luke twenty one twenty five as upon the earth this, this upon the earth distress of nations with per, with perplexity. Excuse me. The next sign that Jesus gives us ha, has increased a lot today are pestilence. In Matthew 24, 7, it says that there will be famines, pestilence, and, war, and earthquakes in various places. The word pestilence in today's dictionary is the same as a plague or a strange disease. And there are many, there are many, there are many different plagues, but in spite of our modern medicine, as the ones up top of the board, AIDS, tuberculosis, gonorrhea, syphilis. The World, the World Health Organization estimates that AIDS deaths will, dub, will more than double in the next 20 years or two decades. This is a result or I like to call a lifestyle disease. This is, this, is, this is a result of how the way we act, the way we behave, though, hey? the way that we hold ourselves as human beings and how we live our daily lives. And it is, but perhaps the most troubling to me is the diseases that which we don't know that what, what causes it or we don't have a known cure for it. Some of these diseases are undoubtedly the result of the pollution, the, the way is the result of the way we polluted our planet. The Bible predicts that, that our world, our, that planet Earth will grow old in Isaiah 51, 6. And God says, lift your, lift your heart, lift, uh, lift your eyes upon to the heavens and look beneath for, for the heavens ha will vanish away like smoke and and the earth will grow like a garnet what better description could be given to the sky and the earth as they Deteri as they deteriorate around us. The sky over the sky over many of our large city is, cities are full are filled with poisonous chemicals that we believe that we breathe in our lungs every day. A lot of a lot of a lot of cities have warned us by putting signs about how dangerous the polluted air is. Many places don't have, don't have drinkable water anymore because of all the dangerous substances in it. So how, will we get, so how will we get food, water, and good energy? They're, they're, with, the rap, with the world's rapid increasing, increasing in population, men, man faces ser a faces serious problems in, in surviving on, on earth. No, no, wonder Jesus said, no wonder Jesus says, says upon the earth distresses of nations with perplexity. Jesus also says that there will be an increase earth, an increasing of earthquakes as well. In Matthew 24, 7, it says there will be earthquakes in various places. There have been mass, a massive, there have been a massive number of earthquakes occurring. Each, each year we have 6,000 6, major, major earthquakes 
in the world. In the last 90 years alone, we have had a whopping 1,500,000 1, fatalities. Luke and Luke and Luke 21 11 through 25 Luke Luke recorded a prediction similar to this and it says and there will be a great earthquake in various places and famines and pestilence and there will and there will be fearful sights and great and great signs from heaven there will be signs from in the sun, the moon, and in the stars, and in, and on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the and the waves are roaring. Notice how they say the seas and the ro- and the waves are roaring. All over the world, we've had we have extraordinary weather. We have typhoons, tidal waves, hurricanes, tsunamis. Um, volcano eruptions and hurricanes and it takes a fearful toll on property and in our lives the Bible predicts the Bible gives another sign the 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 deterioration of morality Jesus compares the conditions of the last days to Sodom and Gomorrah the two cities were so sinful that God finally decided to destroy them with the, with the fire from heaven. And Luke 17, 20, and Luke 17, 20, 28 through to 30, it says, Likewise, also, it, ha- it was in these days of Lot, even though, even, even thus shall it not be the sun in the day in the in the day when the son of man is revealed what but what were but what were the sins that so- Sodom and Gomorrah committed in Jude 1 and Jude 1 7 Jude wrote that Sodom and Gomorrah and the and the and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. Paul, speaking of the moral conditions that characterized these cities, and said in Romans chapter 1, 26 through 27, even, the, even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. And and in some, and, the, and in the same way, men abandoned their natural relationship with women, and inflamed the lust of another. Men committed indecent acts with other men. And that is how the Bible predicts how society will end up in the time of days. In Second Timothy three. Verses twenty, verses two through five, it says people will become lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, de- disobedient of their parents, grace, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, lovers, lovers of the good. Treacherous, rash, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying but denying the pow- but, but denying its power. Yes, God predicts Yes, God predicts that this that society of the last days will be ple- will be will be pleasure loving, greedy and without without ethical ethical convictions scams scams and fraud will multiply
Doesn't it? Oh. In, sec, in 2 Timothy 3, 13, it says, Evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Doesn't this sound like the, like the days that we are living in? And yet, this is another sign of the, day, of the last days of the of the last days Christ has warned warned us about false false Christ and false prophets who who will who will appear and want, who want, who will appear to deceive the world in Matthew 24 23 to through 24 it says that then if anyone says to you look here is Christ, or there, do not believe. For, for Christ and false pro- for false Christ and false prophets will rise and sh- and show great signs of wa- and wonders to to deceive, if possible, even even the elect. Today, the religious world is. Is full of teachers leading us away from the Lord of the God of, of the Word of God. Religion is being religion religion has has become a lucrious business. It is the line the lines between spiritual and entertainment are confused. Many of us follow the most popular pastors or the or the ones who promises the most. We need, we need as a community and as a church, need to follow the word of God. Amen. And the, la- the last and greatest sign that God has, and God, that Jesus and God has given us is, is the gospel being taken all to, being taken to the, to the, to all the world. And this is the only sign that has not come true, that has not been fulfilled, fulfilled yet. In Matthew 24, verse, 15, verse 14, Jesus says, And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a, as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. In the book of Revelation... We, we find that God describes a, the great proclamation. In Revelation 5, 14, 6, it says, Then I saw another angel amidst, flying amidst the heaven, having the everlasting gospel preached to those who dwell on earth, to every, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Do you realize... That you're seeing the fulfillment of this of this prophecy tonight in this very meeting. Amen. The gospel is being proclaimed on television, radio, on TV, the internet, Bible, private Bible lessons, and even evangelistic meetings like the to one tonight. Amen. Yes, my friend, we are living in the time that Jesus foretold. We are living in the last days. Jesus compares our days as the days of Noah. In Matthew, 20, in Matthew 24, 37 through, 30, through 39, Jesus says, But in the days of Noah, but, at, but as the days of, of Noah were, some, so also will... Will the coming of, of the Son of Man be? For as, for as in the days before the, the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving the marriage until, giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and, not, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of, of the Son of Man be. Jesus predict, 
just like just just like the people in Noah's time, we are li- as I just told you, we are living in the signs. We are living in the last days, and a lot of people don't have time, as they say, to have a relationship with with God and to spend time with Him. Amen. They will they will be and they those people will become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We are we can certainly see how close how close we must be how we must be to the coming of Jesus. Things things now are are just at Things now are just as they were the first time Jesus came. They they gave signs of the Messiah coming near, and God even sent his angels and his wise men to let the people know of his birth. And in John and in John 1 verse 11, it says, "He came to know his own, and they did not re- and they did not receive and they did not receive receive him not, and they received him not." That basically means that they weren't ready for Jesus yet. He has given us all these signs that says that he is coming. In Matthew 20 in Matthew 24 verse 33 through 34 it says when when they come to see these things know that know that it is it is near it's at it, it is near at at the doors and surely I say to you this generation will mean will no means pass away till these things are taken have taken place Amen. so will we receive him this time or we will or will we disappoint him again the hour is late and the stakes are high and there's no moment to lose sorry Whew. this is a picture of the Na- of the Central America steamboat that sailed from New York from the New York Harbor south to the Panama Canal. When it sprung a leak, the captain of a nearby rescue ship sent out a sent out a, a message saying, "What's amiss or what is wrong?" As they saw the distress signal from the steamboat, the captain the captain of the steamboat said we are in bad need of prepare and we are going down lie by till morning the would be the would be re, the would be rescuer would could could see that that the steamboat see the steamboat listing in the water and reply let me take let me take your passengers aboard right now it's safe but he but again the steamboat captain replied lie by till morning the cap then cast the, the captain of the of the rescue group insisted that the action should be taken now but he was but he was refused again waiting off into the distance gathering in the gathering night about an hour about a about an hour and a half later they watched as that steamboat sunk and watched the lights disappear the boat was gone and all aboard perished. See, to wait may result in an internally in an internal loss. That the cap the captain of the Central America the Central America thought there was no problem in waiting until morning. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Amen. Do not wait. Do not hesitate. Please do not delay. Do, please do not delay. Why don't you make a decision now to come to Christ now? Amen. Won't you lift up your heart to make the de- to make this decision and ask him to ask him to help you get prepared for the for the for Jesus' soon coming? Tonight I just want to ask Jesus, thank you for providing me with a with a savior. For my certain death, I want you to save me. I want you to. I want. I want to let Jesus save me. 
Is that your desire? Would you join me in this prayer tonight? Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for letting me be your vessel to give this wonderful, this wonderful, wonderful presentation. Letting me, letting me spread the word to all of your children and letting me be, the, be, letting me be your servant. Thank you for giving me all these, get, let, 